we get asked a lot over YouTube comments, Facebook, Instagram, all that type of stuff about the fire pits that we use. And rightly so, because I think it's an important part of camping, we do anyway. Hence the reason we've got four. I was gonna do a dance in the background as he was talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought while we are in a nice, quiet, remote location, unlikely to be, to be surrounded by anybody or any traffic, I'd show you what we've got and give you an idea as to which one you might like best because they're all slightly different. So what I've done is I've laid them out on the floor here so you can see them all packed up and I've gone from largest to the, from the left to smallest on the right. A lot of you will probably already know this one. The smallest one, the cheapest one. I think it's about £20 at the moment from Amazon and it's it's brilliant for the money. If you're cooking over this, it's not so good. But if you just want to fire with a few logs, perfect. We then have the Snow Peak Folding Fire Pit. This is the medium sized. And up until recently, they had small, medium, and large wind. But they've recently brought out an extra large size, which is kind of tempting. As you can see, it's thin as it'll slip under the bed no problem it's quite wide it's a cracking bag as well really heavy duty canvas type bag we then have the Petromac Tego uh, this is another bloody hell jack <laughs> this is another brilliant bit of kit and it this it doesn't come with this bag the snow peak does but this doesn't come with the bag you have to buy it separately of course you do but you don't want to use this without the bag if you put it in the van because it's likely to be dirty from wood and charcoal and what have you. And then we have the largest one. This is the Kadai Travel Kit. It's a Kadai Indian Fire Bowl, but there's quite a lot of bits in this. The bag doesn't get any smaller if you just take the fire pit because of the legs. But I'll show you in a bit, there's a couple of different bits of accessories in here at the same time. Hi boy, ruining the shot. Get out of it. <laughs> so I'll give you an idea. These are all dead easy to set up, but I'll give you an idea. Probably haven't set myself up very well here. I think I've chopped the top of my head off, but you'll be fine. So I'll give you an idea as to how easy they are to set up. Believe it or not, this is probably the hardest to set up this one, and it is fairly easy. Get these two little clips. No. You get a load of little aluminium legs that are all intertwined. I said two clips, there's actually four. Jack. <laughs> and then you get this stainless steel square mesh with a little eyelet in each corner. A number of you have probably seen this a million times, but if you haven't, keep watching. So all you'll do, some of the sections within this co collection of poles are loose. So you take them out. So you'll put the rubber feet end same way up. I haven't used this for a while, so it might be a bit rusty. So you've now got four extended pieces with the little rubber feet on the bottom. And the piece without the pieces without the rubber feet go into the other end. Spread it out. Get your little clips, thread it through there and then pop them in the end of the tube. Once you've done that, you've got your fire pit. What's he eating? Jack? No. So this is pretty much your average size split log that you'll buy from your local log supplier as you can see there's plenty of room for two three four of them stacked up on top of each other the reason i say it's probably not ideal to cook on is because it is a little bit flexible but 20 quid you can't knock it what we have next is one of my favorites it's the snow peak I'm not going to do specs and sizes and all that palaver, it's all on the website. 
with two little velcro straps on this real heavy canvas bag you get a cast iron charcoal grate which is rusting despite me never using it but that can go in the bottom and hold charcoal so it holds the charcoal up on a level plane and higher up to, towards the grill you get your base plate that stops any ashes from falling down and scorching the grass and then you have the fire pit itself which as you can see extremely thin it's, it's almost paper thin it's ridiculous put that to one side and this is one of the easiest to set up you simply just open it place the little legs in there and that's it it's done you see it's been used once or twice but that is as sturdy as it comes it's made of stainless steel i think it's 304 stainless steel i put a lot of weight on that that little cast iron thing sits in there like that now granted it doesn't give you an awful lot of space between your charcoal and your grill but i've used a TJM Metalworks fire anchor grill with this a number of times we cooked a well, it was a 1.1 kilo ribeye steak on this in the Yorkshire Dales and what I was able to do was have it higher up to get it up to temperature and then bring it down closer to the heat to sear it it's perfect but this is really really good and again your average size log fits in there no problem Remember this is the medium, you can get a large, which is slightly bigger, so I think it's only a few centimetres bigger, but it makes quite a difference. But yeah, I'll get an easy four or five logs in there. So the next largest one is the Petromax Otago. It might be a Targo, I don't know. It's a Tago today. But again, as I mentioned before, this bag doesn't come included, but it's necessary. This again is stainless steel. Clever thing about this is, if I can get my sausage fingers in there, you grab the handle and pull up. Just watch the top extend from the bottom now. And the legs pop out as well. It's pretty dirty, we used this. Last weekend at Van Life Festival, did a couple of burgers on it. But you've got a heavy stainless steel grill that comes included. You've got lots of ventilation holes, and there is there's a little sliding thing there which allows you to control the airflow coming in from the bottom of the pit. And going back to your average standard size split, it swallows it up. You'll get plenty in there. Like that, mate. Come on, move. I only ever put about three or four in at a time because you end up getting too much, too much of a fire. I've used this quite a few times. We've had briquettes in it, charcoal briquettes. We did in Scotland in the winter. We did a big ribeye again, a ribeye steak, and I had a two-zone cooking. I had coals on this side, no coals on that side. Put the steak on that side first to get it warm through and then put it over straight over the coals to sear it. One of the big benefits for this and one of the reasons I bought it is you can get the Petromax um, cast iron Dutch ovens that fit in here perfectly. The FT6 and the FT9 fit in here perfectly. If the Dutch oven's any smaller than the FT6, it'll fall in. So then you'd have to put this grill on top and sit your Dutch oven on top of that instead then. Obviously, if it's a much larger Dutch oven, you can still do the same, put it on top of the grill. In Scotland, in winter again, uh, we cooked a curry in the Dutch oven. So we browned the chicken off, then added all the bits and bobs, threw the rice in, you know, let it simmer. I've got loads of plans with the, ca the cast iron Dutch oven with this. We want to do cakes and bread and pot roast and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's brilliant. So you can use charcoal and wood in this as well. Okay, last one is the Kadai. This, I think the base in Shropshire. This is the nicest looking one, I think. So it comes, this is the travel kit. It comes in this really nice duffel bag. So what you get in here, you 
is the stand with your three legs. You'll get the grill, which again is dirty. You'll get little tongs. This was a little bag with two and a half litres of clay beads in, but we'll ignore that for now. This is an additional extra. This is a dome lid, like an helicopter. So this lid enables it to act a bit more like a barbecue. So it's got the little vents on the lid, a bit like a, um, a barbecue lid basically. And it just allows the smoke to roll around and cook in direct. And it comes with this little ring as well, which sits on the fire bowl. And then obviously you'll need a bowl. got two handles and just sit, sit on the base like that so you put your grill on top and all your firewood or charcoal in there we want a big one of these for our garden we do <laughs> so again we'll go back to our standard size split loads of room absolute bags of room the good thing with this if you've got like a stone floor you don't need the legs, you can simply just put it straight on the stone floor. This is either 30 or 40 centimetres. The larger ones are 60, 70 and 80 centimetres. My uncle's got the 80 centimetre one. But of course he has because he's got the biggest and best of everything when it comes to cooking outdoors. That's what we want for at home. But this is, as long as you've got a little bit more room in the van, this is, this is brilliant and it looks really rustic. It, it just takes on such a nice patina. It, it looks rusty as anything, but you can just treat it with oil. And but you always see all the little rivets and everything, and it's got a little air grill at the bottom, little ventilation. So as Alan explained, why he needs four fire pits, because <laughs> he tells me what occasion he needs each one for. <laughs> Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> they all do different jobs. This cat eye as well. You can get loads of accessories for it. Uh, we were at Van Life Festival last week. We bought this at Van Life Festival last year. We went back to the Kadai store at the Van Life Festival this year and bought bought some more beads off him, which are in the back of the van. I'll get them in a sec. And I got a, a, a hanging a hanging hook. So it basically sits on this the top of this fireball, and then it comes up a little piece comes up like that, and then it just hangs. So you can hang your meat above the fire. I was going to bring it, but we're not hanging anything, so it was pointless taking up extra space in the van. Have you told them the other thing you've got that got delivered the other day? No. But that's not a fire pit. Yeah, but what is it? Yeah, we got we got a pizza oven recently, um, so you'll no doubt see that in the future. We've just caught Jack sticking his nose in a bush. Then we heard squeaking. Then we're seeing Jack run off with a mouse in his mouth. And he's at it. Cats normally bring mice back and play with them. Jack's just demolished it. So I mentioned cat eye beads. This is a five litre bag. I'm pretty sure, I haven't done any research here, so this is all off the top of my useless brain. I'm pretty sure the travel cat eye only needs two and a half litres of beads. You can put five litres in, you put as many as you want. These are, these are basically uh, clay beads. And the idea is you put them in the bottom of the bowl and it prevents the bottom of the bowl getting too hot and burning and what have you. It also protects the ground underneath for the heat transfer. And it also brings your coal or your wood, your fire basically closer to the top or closer to the grill. So if you've got more wood to put in it, you can put less beads in. If you've got hardly any wood or a bit of charcoal, you can put more beads in, get it right to the top. So we've put four splits in each fire pit now to give you an idea as to how much space you'll have when you have an average of four logs in. Most of these logs are all slightly smaller than your average split that you'll buy from a garage or a log store because some of them are from home. But you'll see four logs in the cat eye sitting on top of those clay beads that I was talking about. Then we've got four logs in the Petromax Otago. Although granted these logs in the Otago a bit larger than the other ones. The Amazon fire pit holds four logs, no problem. And then obviously you've got the snow peak at the end. Again, four logs, not a, not a problem. So in summary, you can get any fire pit and make a fire. 
I think these all do slightly different jobs to each other. If you hardly ever have a fire and certainly don't cook over it, one of those Amazon fire pits in the back of your van won't take up any space, weighs next to nothing, costs very little. You should always have one in your van. Then you've got the Snow Peak. Snow Peak is brilliant because it packs up very, very thin. It doesn't pack up very small. You know, you've still got roughly 30 centimetre each, each side, but it takes up very, very little space and it's very good. You can get uh, additional accessories for the Snow Peak. I think it's called a Takibi grill. So it's a Japanese brand. Japanese do things extremely well. And you can get this grill, it sits on top. The reason I didn't get the grill is because it's a it's a chrome grill, I believe, chrome, chrome plated grill. And I read a review somewhere that they said in less than a year it started peeling off. So what I did was I bought an additional TJM Metalworks stainless steel grill, which I haven't used yet, but it's there waiting for me to use it, which will sit over half of this fire pit. Petromax Otago does pretty much everything. You've got the grill included with it. It'll do charcoal, wood. It's extremely stable. Good thing about the Otago as well, Otago, whatever it's called. Someone let me know. You can have a roaring fire in it, or you can have a nice smouldering charcoal fire in it instead and anything in between. You can put the, as I mentioned, the cast iron pots in it. Um, you can have it as a barbecue, because the grill that comes with it as well is a real thick stainless steel grill. I like stainless steel. And it also packs down to not quite as little as the Snow Peak, but it's still a lot less than the Kadai. And then you've got the Kadai. Um, the Kadai is a brilliant bit of kit. It looks really, really nice. I, I like the rusty look. Now, price. I'm sure everybody's wondering how much these bloody things cost if you haven't already had a look. The Amazon one's 20 quid ish. The if, if I remember rightly, the Cadai cost me 110 or 120 pounds. That was for the fireball, the legs, the little tongs, and two and a half litres of beads, and the grill on top, and the bag. I then bought the lid that goes on top of that, the barbecue lid, and I also bought the hook which I haven't used yet. I think the Snow Peak and the Petromax are very similarly priced. The Snow Peak's cheaper if you buy just the fire pit, but I bought the, I think it's called a starter kit. So it comes with the bag, the cast iron charcoal grate and the fire pit and the base. You can buy just, I, I can't remember how much the prices are. So as I'm talking, I'll put them on screen, but the, the fire pit alone is, I think it was roughly 120 quid. I think the kit I bought was 180. Might have been less, can't remember. And then I think the Petromax Otago comes as it is with the, the, the grill, but not the bag, is about 180, I think. And I think the bag was about 20 or 25 quid. So some of them don't work out cheap, but if you're using them a lot and you're cooking on them, it's worth it. We'll be firing one of these up tonight, so I'll put that in a separate video. See you later.